Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us as we mark a really important moment in our work to build a better and more just City of Seattle. I will be signing an executive order that launches new actions at the City of Seattle to combat the spread of hate crimes in our city. And today, we will be leading with equity and a real commitment to learn how the city can better address the root causes of hate violence and make our city safer for our most vulnerable neighbors. I want to acknowledge that while hate crimes impact vulnerable communities across the board, we know that trans women, particularly trans women of color, have experienced and do experience a disproportionate rates of isolation, bullying, and violence. So I want to say unequivocally that the city of Seattle extends its support and its solidarity to our trans community, and we will continue to do all we can to support and protect them. We also know that our trans neighbors make our city better, and any attempt to silence or erase them will not be tolerated. Last year, the city auditor released a report showing that reports of hate crime had risen almost 400%, 400% in the city of Seattle since 2012. That number is absolutely unacceptable. The report also taught us that while hate crimes impact historically marginalized communities, they particularly impact our most vulnerable neighbors and communities of color, LGBTQ individuals, and our Jewish and Muslim communities. Finally, the report showed that our community-based organizations were looking to the city to improve our education, our data sharing, and our prevention efforts. While developing this executive order, we sought to center our recommendations and input on the community-based organizations who have been leading the way on this work for so long. Um, I was able to have a roundtable meeting with some of those community members before I came here, and I will tell you, I left while very unhappy that we are still fighting these battles also inspired by the great work and dedication of these community-based organizations. To be truly effective, we need to embrace long-term upstream solutions that need to be responsive to community needs and priorities. And so with that in mind, this executive order does three things. First, it establishes a work group to evaluate the city's current policies and practices as it relates to hate crimes. The work group will be co-led by at least one community leader to ensure accountability to those community-based partners and will regularly make recommendations and report back to my office and the council. They also will look at how we can do better for things like bystander training, the norm for our public-facing city employees, and how we can evaluate current city laws to better respond and prevent hate crimes. Second, we're going to increase data sharing on hate crimes, not only between SPD and departments, but also with community-based organizations who do this work, and city commissions like the LGBTQ, Women's, Immigrant and Refugee, Disabilities, and, and CPC. All of these community partners themselves are places where people feel safe coming and have energized bases. We need to take advantage of that as a city. The Office for Civil Rights will establish a new grants program to support community safety initiatives and prevent hate crimes. Full funding amounts will be determined in part by the recommendations of this working group. Um, and we hope to make those dollars available this fall so we can put this to work. I really want to thank the members of my team who worked so hard on this executive order, Julie, Adrian, Dominique, and Julia. I also want to recognize um, the Office of Civil Rights Leader, Marco Larkart, who couldn't be here today, but who has been committed to this work for so many years and whose leadership is so critical. I have to also thank two of the people behind me um, who have been so central and been working on this, Councilmember Lisa Herbold and City Attorney Pete Holmes, who when I came into the office themselves have been working tirelessly on the issue of hate crimes and how we can better respond as a city. This work would not be possible without the work that they had done leading up to this. I also want to acknowledge all of the incredible community-based organizations that have been fighting these very important reforms for years. Um, thank you for being on the front lines and representing 
our most vulnerable and most beloved communities. And thank you for always holding us, the city, more accountable for pushing us to do the right thing. We know that the levels of toxicity and hate in our country are rising. That is beyond dispute. And while Seattle prides ourselves on our progressive values, the numbers show we have not been immune to this rise. But I believe Seattle can and must do better. And that's why the work we're launching today is so very important. Um, you'll hear from a number of the, a couple of the people behind me, and then I'll sign the executive order. Right now, I'd like to give uh, Marsha Botzer, who is, I just call her a force of nature. Uh, um, she is a leader in so many areas, the Ingersoll Center, the Equal Rights Washington. I think she must be cloned because she is doing everything everywhere. So Marsha, the microphone's yours. Thank you. Thank, you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate the mayor's comments deeply. My friends, all my friends, the world rolls on. We are always in constant and intent motion. How do we keep up with this whirlwind of human interaction? In fact, there are only things that can do this. Our full, constant, inclusive, vigilance, and true, thoughtful, determined action. My friends, I have been at this work of ours for decades. As so many of you have done, I know that. Meetings, commissions, policies, laws, moments of hopes, moments of tears, learning over the years that change will always come and that we, we must define its direction. For example, the ideas that drove me to create Ingersoll Gender Center in the 70s, that drove me to find ways to serve the trans and gender non-conforming communities and to co-create Equal Rights Washington those years ago, those were astounding ideas in that time. But they are not the ideas that we work with today at Ingersoll or Equal Rights Washington. We had to learn, had to change, had to welcome new ideas. We still do, we always will. And as it is for us, so it is for our government. I am so grateful for this executive order to combat hate crimes. This is progress. Let us see where we will go together. Now is the time. We must be determined to gather the best of present thoughts, ally this with the hard-earned wisdom of our tumultuous past, to join and build with our hearts, minds, and voices a finer city, a better world, a common course set on hope. Ah, so my friends, now, let me, thank you. And now, may I introduce to you someone who makes all these hopes possible, honorable, and real. A leader, a thinker, a fighter, a friend. City Council Member Lisa Herbal. Um, thank you so much, Marsha, for that wonderful introduction. Um, and uh, I'm just so in awe of your passion and the work that you do and the rhythm in which you speak. <laughs> it's really <laughs> inspiring. Um, so since 2016, we know that the rise of Donald Trump has fostered a real atmosphere of open and flagrant intolerance in our country, intolerance that can only be characterized as hatred. Hate crimes are in the rise across the country, and here in Seattle, we see that the number of reported hate crimes also have risen 400% since 2020, especially against African Americans, the LGBTQ community, and our Jewish Muslim uh, and Muslim neighbors. Every person in our city deserves to feel safe, free from harassment, and respected. As elected leaders, it's our responsibility to take action, respond to hate crimes, and prevent future hate crimes and bias from happening in the future. Back in 2016, I learned um, about a horrific attack on a local LGBTQ leader, Michael Voltz. And um, in the wake of that, I asked the city auditor to harness um, the power of that office to investigate hate crimes in Seattle. Um, 
a previous council, I, you know, I really, it's important, I think, to recognize the work done before us and the uh, work of leaders whose shoulders I stand on. Um, a previous council um, led by council members Clark, Lakata, and Rasmussen harnessed the city auditor uh, to do a um, deep dive on how SPD um, enforces bias crimes. In the 2017 audit, um, the auditor made nine recommendations to help prevent, respond to, and report hate crimes, included a SPD hate crimes training curriculum, one that hadn't existed before, more guidance to officers, how they can recognize and respond to hate crimes, um, addressing really important coding issues that were preventing some people from um, actually identifying, for, uh, preventing officers from properly identifying hate crimes as, as truly hate crimes. Um, SPD was also recommended to pilot using hate crimes data for prevention purposes, and the Office of Civil Rights and Seattle Public Utilities was recommended to post hate crime data online to provide Seattle residents with a more complete picture of hate crimes reported in the city. But again, as Marsha mentioned, what we've done in the past cannot stand for what we must do in the future moving on. I do want to give a special shout out, Sean, if you could pass this on to Detective Elizabeth Waring and the fantastic, that she, fantastic work that she's done at SPD um, in the Hate Crimes Unit. Much of the, um, the uh, recommendations that I mentioned from the 2017 audit are recommendations that she has taken responsibility for, for uh, implementing. There was a part two report from the um, auditor's report released last year. It examined hate crimes data, did a geo um, uh, spatial analysis of where hate crimes are, are concentrated in the city, found some really interesting um, uh, information that suggests that um, hate crimes happen in neighborhoods that are changing, um, either neighborhoods that are experiencing uh, gentrification um, and um, uh, or neighborhoods that are experiencing other other kinds of sort of physical changes. Um, based on that work, I proposed a couple actions in the 2020 budget, um, and I'd like to thank the mayor for including items in her executive order that the council either funded or identified for funding in the 2020 budget, specifically grants to community-based organizations responding to hate violence and creating a mechanism for sharing hate crime data reported to those organizations, because one of the things that we found is that people don't always report to SPD or SOCR, so we have to create um, community-based options for people to report hate crimes. Um, and we also identified a need for community-based organizations to develop um, or provide restorative justice programs for individuals who commit hate or bias crimes. We talk about the harm, um, the, the harm that is done to, uh, to victims or survivors of hate crimes. Harm is also done to the perpetrator, the offender, um, in acting out acts of, acts of violence. And I think a restorative justice approach, rather than uh, focusing on sanctions that are punitive, um, are a really important way that we can heal our whole community, um, heal our city, um, and teach people how to live without hate. Um, I also want to th really thank uh, Mayor Durkin for seeking the guidance of um, an experienced and diverse working group, both within the city and, and with, uh, outside of the city. Um, I think relying on that uh, expertise um, will make it so that we can uh, really do a much better job on reviewing the city's uh, hate crime prosecution pra practices, again, emphasizing alternative programs that really focus on changing the hearts and minds of those committing the crimes while also um, healing the people who are victims to the crime. So um, thank you all for, for joining us and thank you all for your really important work at this point. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I just again, a thanks to everyone who's here, many who couldn't be in this room but who are on the front lines doing this work all the time. And to thank again Councilmember Herbold and, and Pete Holmes whose office has really worked on this front too. And for Pete, it is not just a reflection of what he thinks is perhaps the legal thing to do. It is because of his commitment to justice and right. Um, and Pete, thank you for your partnership. Really appreciate it.
the executive order is signed. We will stand together, we will fight together, and Marcia, yes, we will hope and love together. Thank you very much, everyone.